So state your name for the record. Offer your testimony. Aloha. Okay. My ahead. name is Catherine Gian, and I'm with. I'm the executive director of the Pacific Alliance to Stop Slavery. With all due respect to the business industry, um, they have every right to want a quick fix to the problem of homelessness. Um, there's a very big problem with homelessness in Hawaii, but there is no quick fix to this, and that's where they're uh, mistaken. With all due respect to Mr. Egged and um, the representative from the outrigger, whose name eludes me right now, um, these measures do not work, and we've seen this over and over again in other cities, if we've done our homework. And it's only led to a tax on taxpayers who bear the burden to fund these programs. And speaking of funding, by the way, I've heard many people boast about the city council, with all due respect again, uh, about allocating 47 million to housing first programs and housing programs. But what's not talked about is the fact that the operational costs were not fully funded. So we'll talk about this and talk about this when it is convenient for us, but then when it comes to implementation, we fall very short. Is that fair? No. Now back to these um, quick fixes. Criminalizing homelessness would only lead to an overburden of our already overburdened uh, prison systems, which is also another cost we would have to bear. And then we would spit these uh, homeless people back out on the street, and where do you think they're gonna go back to? exactly where they started, right in front of your hotels, by the beaches, everywhere. Now, we've, that's why we need to focus on the root cause. That's why I disagree with Mr. Egged about this not being related to the homeless. You cannot separate the constitutional effects of these, uh, these pieces of legislation that are proposed. You cannot do that, please do not, because the effects affect people on a grand scale because they, threaten our constitutional rights. Now let's start with Bill 50, uh, 43. Not entirely opposed to this bill, but you need to add a criminal intent. Add the language malicious intent or reckless disregard that excludes people with bowel control problems, the elderly especially, and especially the elderly homeless, and little children. Difficulties, now let me just surprise you to the difficulties of, of accessing shelter because the mayor himself publicly on many occasions said that the reasons for these bills were to target the homeless and to force them into shelters in some sort of tough love tactic. Now let me tell you about these requirements for these shelters. First of all, you need ID, okay? Now if you were caught in a city raid at two o'clock in the morning, your ID would be confiscated. As you all well know, you pass those bills as a necessity, and that necessity includes IDs. If you don't have an ID as a homeless person, you can't get into the shelter. If you do have an ID, you have to be a Hawaii resident, and if you're not a Hawaii resident and you do have ID, you have to pay up to $300 to stay in these shelters. Did you know that? Passing criminalizing bills, forcing the extreme poor into shelters is not only internment, it's extortionate if these shelters require payment to receive services. Did you know that? No, you probably didn't. And that is why I beg you to rethink and find out what's going on on the ground level with regard to the homeless and the, and the state of the shelters, which they also suffer. People who actually go to these shelters and stay there complain of abuse, ranging from simple discrimination to rape, even in single gendered shelters. Parents are separated uh, from their children as penalty for doing things like declining to take a computer class. Is that fair? No. Do they have access to justice so that people like you can hear about these grievances? No, they do not have access to justice. Also, the abuse of the sweeps. I have interviewed many homeless people who are subject to these sweeps. And uh, they, uh, the city officials have done things like taken walkers from seniors who would not be able to walk without them. So they would have to sit down on the sidewalk or lie down on the sidewalk because they have no walkers. It was confiscated by the city. I've talked to people who have had their heart medication taken, diabetes medication taken because it was classified as a necessity. And I've to, talked to families who have been abused by these sweeps whose baby's pampers were taken. So my agency had to throw a fundraiser to provide all of the things that the city took 
Is this fair? I beg you, I beg you to find your hearts and exercise your heart muscle because this is where state differs from corporations. Your bottom line is not the end all be all. Your bottom line is the Constitution, which I beg you to uphold. Thank you very much. Thank you for your testimony. Members, any questions for the testifier? No questions? Anyone else?